Father, we come before you. We thank you for your word. And today, again, as we go through your word and we look at what's going on in the world around us, you have exhorted us to watch and pray. Last week, Lord, we saw how in the People's Republic of China, there is already a system that is deployed that has already kept some 17.5 million people from being able to buy plane tickets, train tickets, and other things. So already, Lord, we see a system where men and women may not be able to buy or sell unless they comply. But now, Lord, as we look into the last part of this chapter 13, and we try to discern what exactly will be the mechanism through which they do this. May our hearts be open. And Lord, we'd much rather spend our time looking for Jesus Christ than understanding the details of the Antichrist. But you have put them in your word that if not for this generation, perhaps those who are left behind, that they may be able to discern which way to go. So thank you for this time, Lord. Let your word have power. Let it change our hearts. Let it draw us closer to you. And Lord, we pray your blessing upon it this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, Revelation chapter 13, just to get us back in context. John said to us, I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. And as we have looked at these, we should remind ourselves. Nebuchadnezzar saw a statue, gold, silver, bronze, and iron, and then finally iron and clay at the end, and then God's judgment. Daniel, also seeking God for these things, he saw in his vision four different beasts. He saw the lion, which was Babylon. He saw the bear, Medo-Persia. He saw the leopard that had four heads, the Grecian Empire. Then a fourth beast that wasn't described really as any individual animal, but just this horrific looking creature that had 10 horns, that had teeth of iron and claws of brass, and it devoured and stamped the earth. And as he considered that fourth beast, which we now know is the Roman Empire, he saw 10 horns. And then as he watched the 10 horns, he saw another little horn come up, depose three of the horns, and that little horn began to speak blasphemous things against the God of gods, the God of heaven. And so that was this Antichrist. In chapter 11, we meet this Antichrist again, and he exalts himself above anything that is worshipped or called God, and he begins to persecute the people of God, and this warfare breaks out, which will become Armageddon. So we need to realize two things. One, we have four beasts, but they're epitomized in their leaders. So when you think of Babylon, what king do you think of? Nebuchadnezzar, but there were quite a few kings. When you think of the Medo-Persians, we think of Cyrus from our Bible, but also Xerxes, if you know your history, or Ahasuerus, if you know the book of Esther. When we think of the Grecian Empire, there's really only one name associated, and that is Alexander the Great, but again, also kings in that empire. And in the fourth empire, when we think of Rome, what do you think of? What's Caesar? Some say Julius Caesar, some say Augustus, those of us at the time of the New Testament, Nero. But in these different beasts, you will find in them a key ruler. And so we are seeing here in chapter 13, not only this fourth empire, but this key ruler and things that happened to this key ruler. We know him as the Antichrist. And so again, he stood upon the sand of the sea. He saw a beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads. Chapter 17, we'll get it. Ten horns, which are ten kings that come out of this fourth empire. And upon his horn, ten crowns. And upon his heads the names of blasphemy, or name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, Grecian influence. And his feet were like the feet of a bear, Medo-Persian influence. We've already been through this repeatedly. His mouth was as the mouth of a lion, the Babylonian influence. And the dragon, chapter 12, the devil, gave him his power and his seat or throne and his great authority. And focusing in on this beast and these heads, I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death... His deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. This is the Antichrist. And they worshipped the devil, or the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him, this Antichrist, a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and we learn from Daniel in chapter 7 and in chapter 11, also 2 Thessalonians, and from the Lord in Matthew 24, that in the middle of that peace agreement that he confirms, he takes away the offering and the sacrifice, and now he himself demands to be worshipped as God. 
And so this brings us to the middle of that seven year period, three and a half years. It was given him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy. Power was given unto him to continue 42 months, which you know is three and a half years, or if you're using a Babylonian calendar, it's 1,260 days. And so verse six, he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his character, his title, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, those who've come to faith during this time, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth. Again, a term of the unbeliever used throughout this book 11 times. All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, this Antichrist, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And if any man has an ear, let him hear. And quite simply, you want to be in this book. And how do you get into this book? Thank you, Lou. You put your faith in Jesus Christ. Welcome back, Lou. If any man has an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. In other words, this world is going to reap what it is sown. And so here is the patience and the faith of the saints that God will one day again make things right and his judgment will be a just judgment. And so I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. This was again this false prophet or false representative. And he had two horns like a lamb. He appeared peaceful. And he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast, the Antichrist, before him. And he causes the earth, and again our term here for the unbeliever, them which dwell therein, to worship the Antichrist, the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. As we mentioned, it seems this Antichrist confirms a peace agreement for seven years. It would seem sometime after that peace agreement, he suffers an assassination attempt. Some feel he actually dies and is revived. Other feel he is only mostly dead and has a close scrape with death. When will we know for sure? When it happens. But either way, it will be used to deceive the world. And so they cause the world to worship the beast whose deadly wound was healed. And so he doeth this false prophet great wonder so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven in the earth in the sight of men. Two weeks ago, we talked about that. And he deceiveth them that dwell in the earth, again, are unbelievers, by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. This is the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet in Daniel 9:27 this is the abomination of desolation Jesus warned us in Matthew 24:15 when you see this leave town when this thing gets set up such trouble is coming it's not even worth it to go home leave town and he had power to give life numa spirit unto the image of the beast in some fashion that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast, that they should be killed. Interestingly enough, in that fourth beast Roman Empire, Caesar worship put a lot of Christians to death. And now as we see the iron and the clay coming back together, we see once again essentially a form of Caesar worship. But this time that individual is the Antichrist who is demanding allegiance and worship. And so verse 16, we got about this far last week. He causes all, both small and great, that is of social position, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a charagma, a mark. Let's look at that from a charagma in the Greek simply means a, essentially an engraving, something graven or sculptured, an impression, mark or symbol. Secondary meaning, a mark to cut in or stamped on a sign. Interesting, coming from the root of the idea of karaga or character. And that comes simply from a sense of um, denoted as an engraver or an engraving tool. Interesting, later, the root of this, it meant the impression itself, usually something engraven, cut in, or stamped, a character, letter, mark, or sign. Interesting, because character here in the Greek speaks of an impression which is essentially our character. Your character leaves an impression. 
Interesting as well, then it says on or in, the word there is a P. Now, if you've been with us for a while, you've heard that word a P. We talk about how the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, would be with you, para, alongside. And he convicts the world of righteousness, sin, and judgment. And I'm happy to report the Spirit of God is alive and at work and doing his job, calling people to Christ. We're seeing people get saved. He comes alongside and he shows you your sin and your need to get right. And when you surrender to that convicting work of the Holy Spirit, he will not testify of himself. He will testify of Jesus. And as the convicting work of the Holy Spirit happens and you turn your eyes to Jesus and you ask for his forgiveness and you surrender, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Come into my heart, forgive me my sins. Then the Holy Spirit, as promised, will then come in to you. E-N in the Greek, in. And Jesus promised the Spirit of God would be with you forever. He will guide us into all truth. He will never leave us. The Spirit of God comes into our hearts. And then we saw on the day of Pentecost, as elsewhere in the book of Acts, as the church stood up to serve the Lord. He had promised them in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes, a P, E-P-I in the Greek, upon you. And he'll empower you. So the Spirit of God has always been with us, convicting us of righteousness, sin, and judgment. When we surrender to his conviction and we ask Christ's forgiveness, he then seals us with the Spirit of God to the day of redemption, filling your heart, giving you peace, and changing you. And then as you step out to serve the Lord, you can expect the Spirit of God will also come upon you and give you the ability to serve him in whatever fashion. The word that's used here for this mark in is a P, which normally for us means upon. However, a P has several different definitions of a place in a sense. It can be noted or understood as resting upon, on, in, or of motion upon, to, or towards, which means the mark could just as easily be inside your hand or your forehead as the mark could be on your hand or your forehead. So the question is going to be, which is it? <laughs> We'll find out. But both technologies are already existing, and I'll show you some of that today. So he causes all, verse 16, small and great, rich or poor, free or bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Do you remember back, I know it's been a while, but in Revelation chapter 7, when they had to wait before they had first sealed the servants of God in their foreheads? The 144,000 Jews, not Jehovah's Witnesses, Jews. They were mentioned by tribe, the 144,000. They had sealed them. We saw in Revelation 9 when those locust-like creatures came out of the pit, they left those who had been sealed by God alone, and they only went after those who did not have the seal of God. Interestingly enough, now as we get halfway through this tribulation, or somewhere in this period of the tribulation, Satan, through his Antichrist, now has his own false seal. He's always counterfeiting. And so in this case, this seal that he demands the world take is not only on the poor, it's not only on the small, but it's on the great, it's on the free, as well as the rich, not just the poor, the small, or the slave, or bond. There is today, if you're paying attention, and there's, you know, one of the worst things you can do is spend a lot of time on the internet, because <laughs> it'll just mess you up, right? How many of you, while you've had the break, have, wow, that's a conspiracy theory I hadn't heard of, or wow, that's a strange thing that, none of you, you're lying if you say no, because the news that's been out there is just all over the place. And I've had people email me, Pastor Chris, Pastor, what do you think about it? And I look at it and I'm like, oh, mm. And if I send back, like, hey, then I get an even longer email. Well, you're not paying attention. You should be. Blah, blah, blah. And, and wow. Twenty-five years ago, if you tried to look up information on the Bilderberg Group, you wouldn't find it. Now it's been public knowledge. Their meetings are acknowledged around the world. It's a group of elites. They meet once a year. They plan policy. They look at things. Back before then, you couldn't find them in the news. If they found them in the news, it would be redacted out. This stuff is available. There's also the Council on Foreign Relations. There is a group called the Illuminati. There's things out. There's a number of organizations of the, the so-called rich, powerful, mover, shakers, and elite who meet at different times to discuss global things. And this is out there. And they can go to extremes about what does it mean, and you can get your foil hat out and all that. But know that these things do exist. And there are some who argue that these globalists, and the current administration is anti-globalist, but these globalists seek to essentially dissolve international borders, dissolve international currencies, 
and under what might be the great idea of improving man's efficiency and ability to care for humankind in general, perhaps deploy and change the, the structure of the nations. They're out there if you take time, but don't lose yourself in all kinds of crazy different places to go. But if these people are indeed involved in trying to bring a more global system, be it financially, economically, or even from a banking point of view, they're not going to be exempt from this either. When this system gets put out by the Antichrist, no matter who you are, you will have to participate. And if you do not participate, then it is going to cost you your life. You've heard the old statement, be careful what you ask for. Because there is coming a global system under a global ruler who is going to start out first, in a sense, looking like the best thing the earth has ever seen. My goodness, he's made peace actually hold in the Middle East. And things look great in the beginning. And they start saying peace and safety, as we were warned in 1 Thessalonians 5. But then suddenly he wants to be worshipped. And perhaps a system already in place or beginning to be deployed by him is now forced as a mandate for your obedience. This is what John is telling us is going to come. And again, last week we talked about when I take people to Israel and they see the things in their Bible, they're the synagogues and the, and the Palm Sunday Road and all the Eastern Gate, and they're like, wow, it's true. Everything it's said, it's, it's here. Well, last week I was trying to exhort you with the social credit system of China and some of the technologies that we see today, you will find that a system to do this, if not soon, not too far, it's also going to be here. It just takes the right chain of events and the right world leader to force it on the world. So he's going to cause all, small or great, rich or poor, free or bond, to receive a mark in some form, in or upon their right hand or in their foreheads. What is the result of this system? <clears throat> we studied this last week in some detail. No man might buy or sell, save or accept that he had the mark of the beast, again, that impression or something in your body, or the name of the beast, a second option, or the number, the word is arithmos, the number of his name, three different possible things. Some wonder, could it be three different classes, political, civil, civil and you know, military? I don't know, but there are three options, whether it's the actual mark itself, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, Sophia. Let him that hath understanding, the word is nuos, mental, perception, and appreciation, or emotive thinking. Here is wisdom for him that is able to perceive and think, in a sense, this thing through. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, this Antichrist. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. In fact, when he says to consider, in a sense, or count, it's um, uh, Fieser, in a sense, P.S., E, P-H, Sphizer, to calculate, to compute, to figure out, to reckon. In other words, tie on your thinking caps, church, and maybe we can figure this out. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast. It is the number of men, numbers three score, 606. 666. Anybody got any ideas? What it may look like? Well, okay, Monica, let's show some slides. I'll give you some things that are out there. The first thing we have to consider is the idea that the number is the number of a man. And so let's think about that. Here is another number that is the number of a man. 46664. And the moniker, the logo that goes with this is, it's in our hands. You've got to be saying to yourself right now, oh, this, you've got to be kidding me. This is a complete hoax. No, actually, it is Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela, you'll find at a number of events, at least when he was living, was behind this little podium with 46664, it's in our hands. What's the deal? Mandela was in prison on Robben Island in 1964. He was the 466th prisoner to arrive that year. The way that they numbered prisoners in the prison was to take the prisoner's number, 466, in the year that they were incarcerated, 64. And so for 25 years, Nelson Mandela was known as prisoner 46664. 
After his release there in 1980, he continued to be affiliated with that number, actually as a badge of honor because the fact he had spent so long in prison, when you see the number 46664, it is associated with Nelson Mandela, so much so that even his nonprofit continues, or at least in 2011, the last slide I have of this, if you will Google 46664.com, you will get the Nelson Mandela Foundation. So here is a case where there is a number that is clearly identified with a man, clear to us now because it's history and it's occurred. But Revelation is trying to indicate somehow, perhaps something like this, there will be a number through events that will be immediately identified with this individual. And if you're paying attention and you see someone create a peace agreement and then suddenly you see some other things identified with them, even if you haven't yet come to faith in Christ, but you're living during this period of time, you might actually be able to figure out you need to run and you need to repent and turn to Christ. So as you can see, there'll be lots of, here's the website, by the way, 46664.com. That's their uh, Mandela website. Here is him in a number of events with the usual movers and shakers of Hollywood and music and all that, trying to raise essentially awareness for AIDS, which is one of the things he was doing. Here are the bangles and the bracelets that they had as part of this, 46664. So we've had an example of a case where there's a number that's clearly identified with a man. So the question comes up next, so what is coming to this world? Last week, we took a look at the fact that within China, there's a social credit system. We numbered the different places where people already starting in 2018 were refused from either train rides, buying or selling, promotions, putting their kids in school, or whatever it may be. So we've already seen that in China, there's a system that is already restricting your access to services or marketing and other things or buying. But the question is, what's the world coming to? Back in 1990, in the 1990s, when we were at the Montgomery School, we started talking about RFID chips. And this was cutting edge back then, where people might have some sort of rice-sized you know, chip in their hand. They put it in products, they put it in all kinds of stuff, and it is able to be scanned. And probably the best way to consider it from a, from a working man's knowledge is it's much like an easy pass. And that is you receive a number that is given to you, and when the number is queried by some device that would read it, it comes back representing the number, and that number represents you, your accounts, or whatever it may be. And so, for example, your social security number, or your driver's license number, or even your credit card number today, when someone receives that number, it identifies you, your accounts, and perhaps transactions. Now, if you're squeamish, look away. They put it in your hand with a needle. I warned. And it looks like that. And here's an x-ray of a right hand with an RFID chip inside. And when these things came out, quite a few people began to say, hey, this might be the mark of the beast. And let me ask you a question. <clears throat> the inventor of this, I don't necessarily would say, or inventors were sitting there going, how do we bring about this mark of the beast? What do you think, fellas? I, don't, I know. How about a little chip we can put in their hand? But could it be used? Church? Sure. But once again, just because Alexander Graham Bell said, Watson, come here, doesn't mean he knew that the system would eventually be used for horrible things like phone sex. Just because something's invented, it doesn't mean they know where they're going to take the application. So this was one possibility. But then those who said, well, wait a minute, the word is a P, it should be a pun, said it's got to be something outside. Well, not to be undeterred here, they have created identification type things for chips on the outside. This is a tattoo, essentially. These things came out in 2012. They were researching them and began to make public what they've prepared. And so here's a company called MC10. They win Wall Street, Journal, Wall Street Journal's Innovation Award, October 16, 2012. I'll read to you from it. Most of the semiconductors that power our digital life are flat. Rigid wafers are glass, fine for phones and computers, but not very useful for clothing or implants. <clears throat> MC10 creates flexible electronics using techniques Devoured by co-founder John A. Rogers from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. First, it makes chips one-fifth the width of a human hair, which are then transferred to a stretchable rubber-like polymer connected by tiny wires. This creates a mesh that is flexible enough to bend or stretch with the underlying material which protects the delicate circuitry from the stresses of the natural world. Raybach International Limited plans to introduce the first product using this technology later this year. Again, this is 2012. David Ickel, Ike, 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 anyway, you try. MC10's chief executive won't give details about the product, saying only that it is a wearable device to help improve athletic performance. Much like chipping your sports car. There you go. 
Interestingly enough, another one, this coming from uh, 2019, uh, 2019, yeah. Here, this one is talking about signals, the website, signal.org, I think it was. Identification verification capabilities shrink. September 19, 2019. The Army takes its cue from retail successes with a small form factor. The identification verification tools that are easily working or at work at the corner bank to access cash or online to pay a bill don't work as easily on the battlefield where the simple action of pulling out a card out of a pocket is clumsy and at best impossible at worst, at best or impossible at worst. To address this challenge in harsh environments, U.S. Army is introducing tokens that can be incorporated into wearables. I know someone I love very much who is living in a country that has a social credit system who at one point was forced to wear a wearable because of the things going on. This stuff's being used in other countries. But it's a wearable bracelet, necklace, such as bracelets or even dog tags. For nearly two decades, the military has been using the common access cards for both physical and system access. So here's the military working on a very small kind of sliver. And again, who knows how they could deploy it, maybe even eventually implant it, we'll find out. But there are at least three technologies out there that would give the opportunity, and any of these three could easily be put on a human body in some fashion. Okay, fine. Why is this such a hot button? Well, this is coming from a website called One World Identity. And in One World Identity here in 2018, they were identifying the <clears throat> identity landscape. They talk about companies to know, innovators, disruptors, and game changers. And they essentially said, here is the digital authentication space or the ID space. Here are the key groups and subgroups among them. But here are the key reasons why the world would like to see this technology rolled out. Number one, digital commerce. Secondly, authentication, whether you're working for the military or getting into your job or perhaps even your home or your car. Social networks, be awfully good that nobody could hack your network and pretend to be you and post all kinds of nonsense. The Internet of Things, all the devices used around your home from the other objects you have, simply scanning who you are. And obviously the most simple use of it is personal identity. These are all hot button issues that when someone finally delivers a better mousetrap, they're going to make a lot of money. And this is what they are driving towards. But what does the Greek say? What do we have here in our text? What is this? His number is 600, three score, and six. So at the top, here is our text, anthropos, man, chi, and his, otos, number, that is o, that's ho, the, arithmos. The number is chi, psi, sigma, three letters. You'll see it there under six, chi, psi, sigma, chi. It stands numerically for 600. Psi stands for 60. Sigma stands for six. So what John wrote to us is 666. That is our number. Here, the author talks about it's an enigmatic number found in Revelation 13, 18. The number six being the number of man. What day did God create man? Being the number of man may indicate that 666 symbolizes the zenith of man's power. Again, this author goes on to give his idea. Thus, we might say that the triple six is the fullest, highest development of man under direct satanic control. It is the combination of civil, religious, and political power satanically inspired. It is, so far as man can do it, the complete setting aside of God as the supreme ruler. And Jesus let us know those kind of days are so bad, he's got to interrupt them and shorten them. So this Chi Psi Sigma, 666, I decided to go, hmm, is anybody using Chi Psi Sigma? Well, yes, they are. Quite a few. In fact, Chi Psi Sigma, of course, the usual, you know, crazy rock band grabbed it for their albums and other things. But not just that, you'll actually find if you Google it, there's a whole lot of Chi Psi Sigma out there. You'll find it, for example, on phone cases. You'll find it on stickers. You'll find what looks like a fraternity symbol, the Chi Psi Sigma, the, you know, the plastic elevated letters you see on the back of someone's car. And you'll think, oh, they're in the fraternity. No, <laughs> they may be in the lake if they're not careful. Lake of fire, Chi Psi Sigma. Interestingly enough, you may be sitting at work and someone next to you at work has their aluminum water bottle and on there is a sticker like this that is 666 Chi Psi Sigma. It's surprisingly, you know, 12, 11 years ago we went through this. I, I didn't find this kind of stuff. At least I can't say I, I was able to find it. Probably existed, but now you do some simple searches and you can find it all over the place. They have stickers. They have t-shirts. If you see this on a t-shirt, this is 666 Chi Psi Sigma. 
That's the uppercase, in case you want to keep an eye out for it. And here's the lowercase, chi, psi, sigma. Ladies, don't feel left out. They have them for you. Chi, psi, sigma. And somebody decided it'd be fun to put on their right arm in a tattoo. Chi, psi, sigma. I don't know exactly what this thing's going to look like, and I don't know if this is incorporated, but it's interesting the world is already primed to the idea, at least the unbelieving world. Huh. So here we are, finally, some of you back in the room. The question comes up with all this. Has COVID, yeah, praise God, has COVID-19 had any impact on this subject? <laughs> Funny you ask, because just this month, a couple of articles came out. Here, Zero Hedge, essentially quoting another article, so let's just go right to that article. This coming from Activist Post, July 15th, 2020. Yeah, about a week ago. Africa to become testing ground for trust stamp, verification record, or sorry, vaccine record, and payment system. Let me read some to you. The program, which was first launched in 2018, will see Trust Stamp's digital identity platform integrated into the GAVI MasterCard Wellness Pass. Sounds so comfy. Wellness Pass, a digital verification record and identity system that is also linked to MasterCard's click to pay, or click to play, sorry, system, that is powered by its AI, that's artificial intelligence for those who aren't keeping up, by its AI machine learning technology called New Data. MasterCard, in addition to professing its commitment to promoting centralized record keeping of childhood immunization, also describes itself as a leader toward a world beyond cash. Now let me pause there for a minute. To get a world beyond cash, what do you have to get rid of? Cash, good. You guys are up to speed on this. Which means they've got to do something, or governments in their ineptitude have done something to absolutely destroy cash, to where people are desperate to find some other stable means, which is why last week we read Steve Forbes' letter to Mark Zuckerberg about his Libra that he suggested he call the mark, his digital global currency, and he suggested he back it by gold. These guys are preparing for a world beyond cash, in its partnership, I go on with GAVI, marks a novel approach towards linking a biometric digital identity system, vaccination records, <clears throat> and a payment system into a single cohesive platform. The effort, since its launch nearly two years ago, has been funded via a 3.8 million uh, in GAVI donor funds, in addition to a match donation of the same amount by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Early in June, GAVI reported that MasterCard's Wellness Pass program will be adapted in response to the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. Around a month later, MasterCard announced that the Trust Stamps biometric identity platforms will be integrated into Wellness Pass as Trust Stamp system is capable of providing biometric identity in areas of the world lacking internet access or cellular connectivity. Also, it does not require knowledge of the individual's legal name or identity to function. We'll just give them a number. The wellness program involved, involving CA, GAVI, MasterCard, and Trust Stamp will soon be launched in West Africa and will be coupled with a COVID-19 vaccination program once a vaccine becomes available. They're ready to test and they're ready to roll it out. So, Pastor, are you saying that these folks, and, and say, for example, Bill Gates, he's the Antichrist? I'm not saying that. Much like Alexander Graham Bell, they may be inventing a technology for one thing that gets taken and used for something absolutely awful. But the technology is ready to go. And this is where it's going to take us. No man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast or the number of his name, whichever one they present. So right about now, you get that little acidic taste in the back of your mouth saying, oh my goodness, how soon? And there are quite a few people, we can bring the lights a little bit up if you guys would. We're still gonna need the projector one more second. Quite a few people getting pretty worried about what they're seeing. And I'm getting the emails of, look what these guys are doing, and do you think this one's it? And, and honestly, I want to give the church the most simple exhortation I can give. And that is, remember, you have to have a beast before 
you can have the mark of the beast be forced on smaller, great, rich or poor for your bond. First, the Antichrist has to rise. And the way the Antichrist rises is he confirms a peace agreement with many for one week or seven years. So he takes, it seems, an existing peace agreement, makes it stick, gets the world, especially the area of the Middle East, to give Israel enough of a relief and peace and recognition that they are able to then build their third temple. In Solomon's day, they did it in seven years. Now with their technology, it's interesting, they could do it easily more than half that time. It's interesting that they get their peace agreement and three and a half years in, the temple is on site, it is functioning, and this Antichrist goes in, shuts down the worship, demands to be worshiped as God himself, and then begins to roll out essentially a loyalty program and a system. So this mark could show up in the middle of the tribulation. This mark could possibly show up right after the signing of that peace agreement. But whether it's right after it's signed or in the middle, you first have to have the peace agreement. Now, I'll review because it's been a while. In Revelation chapter 6, the Lamb broke the first seal. And when he broke the first seal, there rose one who was riding a white horse who went forth conquering and to conquer. A crown was given to him. It is the rise of the Antichrist, how do you know? Because immediately following is war, the second seal, and that's where he is taking three of those other horns out of the way and establishing his power all over the earth. Following that comes the famine and the pestilence, which are the disruptions that come from warfare, be it supply chain or even the ability to farm, and then of course, the death that follows. So these things follow this Antichrist. But before he took the scroll and broke the seal, he was in chapter 5. And the Lamb took it out of the hand of God the Father who sat on the throne. And when he took the scroll with those seven seals out of the hand of God the Father, everyone bowing down worshipped him. And most importantly, a group that said, You are worthy to take the scroll and to loose the seals, for you were slain, and you have redeemed us by thy blood, and you have made us kings and priests unto our God. That was the church in the presence of Jesus Christ, worshipping him before the first seal was broken. Then you go back to chapter 4, and you have in chapter 4 a voice from heaven saying, come up here. And interestingly enough, you see the word church used 19 times in chapter 1 through chapter 3. We hear come up here, and you don't see the church again till chapter 19 as Christ returns. The church is gone. So what are you saying, Pastor? It is my heartfelt conviction the church is going to be removed as this or before this peace agreement gets signed. However... That doesn't mean in America we won't see persecution. That doesn't mean in America we may not see financial implosion that destroys the world's reserve currency we know as the dollar that would drive the world into a digital form of currency that might be multiple ones, Bitcoin and whatever, and the Federal Reserve and whoever, the, and the Libra, if it's Facebook. It could be a bunch of them, and that'll be chaos. And someone will rise up and say, we need a single system. These are things we could easily see. So if you think, well, we're out of here, we're not going to see any trouble. Well, I beg to differ. We might actually see some pretty weird. Has it been a strange year? How many would say yes? How many says how it goes for you? Well, we may have seen nothing yet. But that doesn't mean we're not going to be called out. It just means this event hasn't yet happened. So you watch and you pray and you look for opportunities to share with neighbors, friends, and family because the more these things are being driven our way with systems of identification and vaccination records and all that, the more these things begin to emerge on the world scene, the more they are confirming what you heard. There's a day coming when no one can buy or sell. It's already happening in China, unless you are on the party line. And in this case, you have to have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. But you don't get the number until you first get a beast. So you don't have to panic. You gotta be excited. Jesus is coming, time is running out, and more importantly, if you're here or you're listening and you don't know Christ, you're, you're, you know, you're just kicking the tire, seeing what's going on or what are those Christians up to. Well, what we're up to is eventually being taken home by the Lord, and then there's gonna come a time that Jesus said, unless it were interrupted by him, no one survives. Why would you wanna go through that? Today, if you hear the Lord's voice, don't harden your heart, but ask God's forgiveness. Turn from your sin to Christ, and he will change you from the inside out. 
And all you have to do is, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. And I ask you to come into my heart and forgive my sins. And the Holy Spirit will go from being alongside of you to putting faith in Christ now in you. And he'll begin to change you. But he'll only come in if you ask. Let's stand. Let's pray. We're going to go short because it's going to be hot outside today. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this day. As we see these things coming, Lord, you told us to look up because our redemption draws near. Lord, long ago at the Montgomery School, people were blown away. Whoa, you could put a chip in a hand? Now we have it in our products we buy from the store and our past to get through the turnpike and more places than we realize. Some of the people in the room might even have Bitcoin. And all it takes is like a Reese's peanut butter cup, that chocolate and that peanut butter to collide at just the right time. Suddenly we got a whole new system. Lord, be with your people, strengthen them today, and may our hearts be filled with hope and joy because these things were warned. Thank you, you did not leave us without a clue on these issues. And Lord, how we pray for this world, open the blind eyes. Lord, help them to see what is going on around them. Call them, Lord, we pray, from darkness to light. Oh, God, that we might have a revival, and it would be big. In Jesus' name, amen.